Hi everyone. How's it going? My name is Avinash. I'm the digital marketing evangelist for Google. And my name is Nick Mihailovsky. I'm a developer advocate for analytics. And we are at the Nick Rocks Ninja Show. <laughs> nice. <laughs> actually, I, I do want this title to be, let's see how much Nick rocks, because he's actually going to be answering most of the questions. I think you have a lot of questions for you here, Avinash, too. <laughs> well, let's start with a question for you. <laughs> start. For the question currently in the lead, um, so a question for you, Avinash. How do you determine what caused your visitors to become return visitors? I want to see the original visit that resulted in a returning visitor. Basically, I want a segmentation criteria that matches all the visits that result in a returning visit. This is from Talib in Seattle. Not very far away. Hi, Talib. Um, so, so there are a few layers in here that, that are very important to understand. So one of the simplest ways in which you can understand what is working, what is not, let's say, for your campaigns, is just create a segment for new visitors and you know and see where uh, they are getting more new visitors and which campaigns are causing more returning visitors. It's a mm -hmm. simple mm -hmm. analysis to do. I think the thing that you specifically wanted to do is you wanted to say, let's say for example, Nick came to the website um, and then Nick, Nick returned to the website another time. And what you want to be able to say is, find me all the Nicks that are on my website. Mm -hmm. Let me put them into a segment and let me then analyze their behavior of these yeah, people. Yeah. And at the moment, um, Google Analytics, um, the, all the other tools that are in the marketplace are visits-based segmentation web analytics tools. Um, so you won't be able to do that one particular case um, with Google Analytics. But this is, of course, something that we're very passionate about. So say, stay tuned for uh, more things, hopefully, that we'll be able to do. But for the moment, it's important to understand. You're able to create those segments, yeah, yeah. but get the visits, not the people, the visits, and you're able to analyze their behavior in Google Analytics um, pretty easily. And we're gonna report your request back to our team as, a, as an excellent uh, next step. You know like how we have like a bounce rate, whereas for a session, exactly. a bounce rate is one page and then they left? Yes. I want bounce rate for visitors. There you go. So show me all the visits where they only had one visit but mm -hmm. never came back. That would be great for my vlog, because most people will bounce. So you can talk about, about it on your vlog. Yeah. Yeah. And you can also write content about it. There you go. Very, very nice. <laughs> right. uh, so here's, here's a question right. for, for Nick. It says, what's your recommended method for calculating click-through rates on-site elements like widgets? I'd like, I'd like a metric defined as clicks on a visit on widget A divided by exposure to widget A equals click-through rate. Create a click event, exposure to CV, and do the math manually. Is it possible to automate some, something like this? Uh, it's from Carson Smith in DC, Washington DC. So I think, I think it is possible, Nick. Yeah, definitely. So the whole goal here is looking at click-through rate on different site elements. So you want to look at the view and then the number of clicks. So you can either track the view as a non-interaction event with event tracking, and then the click is an interaction event, and then do the calculation manually. Um, each event is tied to the actual page. So you can actually look at page views uh, as also your kind of your impressions and then the number of events on the page as the actual click-through rate. Uh, to get the actual analysis for this, uh, you, you, know, you can export and do an Excel or you can automate it from the API. And so we're seeing a lot of people using the API to kind of simplify this custom reporting to get this kind of deeper analysis for this. Exactly, I, th I think API is the way to go. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah. can be automated, you can put it into Excel, whatever. And we've got lots of uh, apps on our app gallery that allow you to really yeah, yeah. automate Simple. the presentation yeah. layer. Exactly. And not just to you know, sort of puke data out, but actually make it look mm -hmm. pretty. Another one for you, Nick, from Chris in Tampa, Florida. Um, what is the best way for tracking internal traffic to our websites with filters, excluding including IPs from duplicate profiles, or can we set up custom variables for internal traffic? How would we implement a custom variable if we can? Yeah, it's a good question. A lot so the of complexity here. Yeah, so the question really boils down to is you have some internal users in your organizations that are exter that are accessing your website, Correct. and you don't want these internal behaviors. You know, they're a lot different than external people to be polluting your data. Sure. Right. So the first step in any of this is you have to actually identify who these internal users are. Mm -hmm. Right. Without being able to identify them, there's no way to exclude them. And then you have a couple options. You can either use the authentication system. So if it's like an internal uh, site where you have to log in. If that uh, user is logged in, yeah. then you can set a, a custom variable cookie, mm -hmm. and then you can segment from that. Um, the other option is by IP address. So if they're with, it, if you can only access the site from internal in the organization, you, uh, that's another option. Or you can have some sort of browser plugin. So I know some of our partners, mm -hmm. when they actually do analysis, they'll set up some filters, and then they'll have a plugin that automatically tracks them and, and allows them to filter out their their usage behavior on analytics. 
So there's no, um, so there's a couple options that you could try to use based on what you're trying yeah. to do. And overall, Chris, I, I think that I, I personally tell people not to obsess about internal traffic because if your internal traffic is so big that it can have a big polluting impact on your external traffic, then you have bigger problems. You, you need to find a lot of external traffic. External users, so, yeah. So yeah, anyway, yeah. Just, I, I'm kind of a little biased from a marketing perspective, yeah. So question for you, Avinash. This is from Mohit Jain in Dubai. Uh, in fast access mode, when 500,000 mm -hmm. sessions are sampled, are these the first top 500,000 sessions? in any order or is some random 500,000 sessions? So, the, so they're actually, this is a very good question, Mohit. Um, it's random per day and they are equally distributed across a date range. So that just gives you a little hint of how sophisticated um, the sampling methodology is because we want to make sure that the answer you get out of it is a representative answer. So there's a lot of math and logic and sophistication behind it. So the simple answer, it's random per day, and it's equally distributed over the entire date range. But, but just for you, just as a little gift, oh, yeah? Nick is going to write a little blurb in the blog post that contains this video, where we're going to explain to you the deep math that goes into it, because we need, well, we need a whiteboard to do that, and <laughs> it'll take a little bit of time. So we'll do that in the blog post. Good. Follow-up. Uh, OK, this is from Joe in Illinois. How you doing, Joe? Uh, regarding last episode's question on visits to transactions, <laughs> versus multi-channel funnels in this post, in Joe Link's still post, yes. it cites very different cookie behavior between the two. Is this explanation correct? If so, visits to transaction under count. So to, to encapsulate what this link says is that there's two reports in Google Analytics. There's the visits to transaction report, and there's the path length in multi-channel funnels. Correct. So how come those data points yes. are different? Yes, yes, yes. I, I love the fact that we have viewers of the TV show yeah. that are so diligent yeah. and they fact check what we say. So thank you, Joe. Let's, Joe, email me. You're the ninja of the episode. Done. We, we, we give out a copy of Web Analytics 2.0 to the best question. We're going to give it to you. So find my email, email me, and we'll send you a signed copy of my I mean, book. he looked at last episodes. He looked like, at a different blog post. He needed to clarify. I love it. You rock. OK, so let me, let me, let me, let me layer things down. The first and very important thing, Joe, to understand is that the cookie behavior is actually the same. Mm -hmm. that there's actually no difference across the two data sources. Mm -hmm. The way Google Analytics behave, the cookie behavior is exactly the same. So let's 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 take that in a bucket, put it aside, and call it gold. Okay, because that never changes. <laughs> Next, uh, what I had recommended for people was to look at um, a certain thing in visits to transaction and certain things in path length because one might be including goals and other might. That isn't true. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when you look at visits to transaction in the e-commerce section, what the name might suggest is you're looking at the number of visits from the first visit that it took to convert. But the reality is what the report actually shows is the number of visits from which conversion happened, but since the last campaign. Ooh. So anything except direct. So let's say you came under a search campaign, then you came under an email campaign, then you came under a Facebook campaign, and then came 15 other times and convert it, it's only going to count since the Facebook campaign and ignore the other two, which is a suboptimal report, so don't use it. The report that is called path length in the MCF, multi-channel funnels report, is a very good one, because what it does is, it doesn't say with this funky, silly logic of since the last campaign, what it says is, in the last 30 days, when was the first time that somebody visited, and since then, how many visits does it lead up to creating a conversion? So they are two different computation because of this nuance since last campaign versus over the last 30 days. That's what causes those two numbers to be different. And so my recommendation to all our viewers and, and everybody is to use the path length report and ignore the visits to transaction and days since transaction. Those two reports in, in the e-commerce section, just light a little fire, burn it, enjoy it. Use the path length and the time lag reports in MCFs. And thank you again, Joe, uh, for asking this question. MCF, there's the solution. There you go. Love it. Uh, here's a question for you, Nick. Fim, simple, straightforward. Can I enter an event as a step in a goal funnel? I want to track how many goals completed after an event is triggered. I'm trying to track internal campaigns. What is the best way to do it? All the way from Mumbai, India, it's Amiya who's yeah. asking this question. Uh, it's a good question. There's no way to do that. Um, <laughs> you can use virtual <laughs> page use. That's an easy answer. <laughs> So use virtual page views. To All the way from problem. India, we have a very simple answer. OK. Uh, here's a question from Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Hey. We know him, smart guy. Um, it's for you, Nick. And Adrian is asking, what's the best way to debug analytics for iOS and Android de deployments without waiting for the reports? 
There are great options for Safari, Chrome, Firefox, but not for iOS and Android apps. Any suggestions? Yeah, it's a great thing. Um, so we had the same problem uh, when we were putting demos together for last year's Google I.O. conference. So I told the developers, like, we need a way to see this output. And they actually implemented this feature. So there's a method called set debug in both of the libraries, iOS and Android, that will actually output to the logger the actual requests being made to Google Analytics. And I'll link to my Google I.O. video last year where we presented this new feature so you can see exactly how you can set it up. Man, I love it when, when we've already <laughs> done the thing you're asking for. I, I love that. I had the same problem, you know? <laughs> Another question for you, Nick. I'd like to know how many times a particular event happened per session. Okay. Um, event tracking is executed each time this action takes place, but a value is not attached. Is there a way to segment, i.e., uh, example, visits with one event, visits with five events, et cetera, et cetera, also from Adrian. We're yeah. going to start charging Adrian money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a good question, Adrian. Uh, this is a good question. So. Um, I think the answer is in the question. So with s advanced segments, what we're doing is we're matching sessions. So if you set in the exam advanced segment expression, show me where total events is equal to one, we'll show you all sessions where there's ah, there one event in the session, mm -hmm. and then we'll calculate all the reports in the tabular view based on that subset of sessions. So if you create an advanced segment that says show me where total events equals five, only the sessions where people had five events will be included in the calculation Perfect. for all the rest of the reports. There you go. Agents should be we're just knocking this out of the park. Boom. <laughs> Swing it. Another way from Kunal in India. Another question all the way from India. Uh, what is the best way to track actual duration for which a video was played and not just start, pause, stop buttons being clicked. So my assumption here, Nick, is that start, pause, stop being clicked are all events that we can capture. Right. And what Kunal wants to know is, is how do I just compute the duration for which the video was played? It's a great question. A lot of people ask this question, and the best response that we have is to actually send the time people watch a video ah. as the value in an event. I see, I see. So what you can do is when people start the video, you take a timestamp and people watch it. When they're done watching the video, you take another timestamp, you subtract the two, and you send both of those in an event value. Perfect. So it's just it's a matter of implementing events properly. A separate event, but mm -hmm. you're using the value, and you're reporting on that. Perfect. And, Perfect. and what's nice, actually, in the report, it will give you the total event value, so the total amount of time people watched, but we'll also show you the average event value, which is nice as well. Fantastic. Another question for you from Adrian. Adrian! Dude! <laughs> OK, good one. Um, Do we what, have another book? We, uh, it seems like he needs a book. <laughs> what differences are there between Google Analytics Cookie versus what is used in the iOS Android Easy Tracker Library? For instance, is there an expiration date when batching tracking requests? Does Easy Tracker Library even use cookies? I think that answer is quite simple. It's, yeah, so first of all, just to clarify the question, so we have JavaScript tracking code, which uses cookies in the browser, and then we have native Android application tracking. And we created this library called Easy Tracker to make it ridiculously simple to set up tracking and applications. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're in the applications, we're not using cookies. We're using the local storage to the device. And in this case, we're using a SQLite table. So we're using SQLite to persist all the data uh, on the Android uh, device. Perfect, there you go. Another one for you, Nick, from Washington, DC, from Oscar Javieros. And Oscar says, how do you explain the difference between repeat visitors and unique visitors? So first I want to say that there's no repeat visitors. I think they have repeat visits. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they have unique visitors. Right, right, right. So how would you, how would you just clarify this a little bit for Oscar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's just a little bit of logic here. Um, so repeat visitors are not new visitors. Correct. Correct. We got that one? Yes, okay, yes, okay. Yes. So new visitors are always counted the first time that GA encounters them. There's actually a little counter in every cookie. And every time we see one, the visit count is one, we know they're your unique visitors. There you go. So it's really repeat visits that are being reported. Uh, and there's a little bug in the UI that you think it's a visitors. There's no such thing as repeat visitors. There's just visits. So the next question for you, Nick, it says, hello, ninjas. I've got a, hey, this is the Nick Rocks episode. I know, we're just, we're just going through them, hello, going through them fast. Hello, ninjas. I've got a question about the UTMZ cookie length and multi-channel analysis. If I shorten the expiration date, I get more conversion. I'll get more conversions from direct. 
does that help to get creator insights? I don't know. I, I don't want to monkey with cookie things. What yeah, do you well, so it's from a Florian in France. It's a good question. So one of the older episodes, we talked about what happens when you change the cookie timeout for the uh, campaign yeah. cookie timeout, right? And what we said is the actual thing that happens is you get more direct. Sure. Right. Well, it turns out in multi-channel funnels, we actually don't do any of the direct. And the way the attribution works is if you come from a search mm -hmm. and you come from direct and you come from direct, multi-channel funnels will say direct, direct, search direct, direct. It actually keeps direct. Good. It doesn't overwrite stuff, right? And now it's coming to the challenges we had also with uh, you know, business to transaction, yes, right? Yes. Where business to transaction is looking at the overwrite stuff. Yes. So in multi-channel funnels, we always look at the last interaction or last click. So even if you change this session timeout, it won't have an effect on that report. So you don't get any better insights. There you go. Don't monkey with cookie timeouts. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's time for you to answer a there question. There you go. Yeah. This is from Jonas in Oslo. All the way in Oslo. I love Norway. <laughs> uh, analytics does not seem to import the conversions from AdWords. Is there a way to get these data in analytics? My site shows different numbers of conversions and goals yes. specified in Google Analytics, even though the goal and conversion URL are the same. Yeah, so, so again, it, it's a matter of two different systems, two different things, et cetera. And there's always a little nuanced difference. I mean, even if you capture the same data using Omniture and Google Analytics, there'll be a subtle difference. It's kind of the same case. So in this case, there is a one-way back that goes. So AdWords goals cannot come into Google Analytics, but Google Analytics goals can go into AdWords and help you with um, automated optimization, for example. So when you use conversion tracking, for example, you don't need to use the AdWords conversion tracking, you can just use the Google Analytics goals to as an mm. input into conversion tracking. So what you want to do is set your goals in Google Analytics, import those goals into AdWords, and then everything will work smoothly because it's all using the same exact computation in order to optimize your campaigns. So you, you don't need to have the goals in AdWords. They can just be the ones that you have in Google Analytics. Love it. So another question for you here from Jens and Jens Waden in Stockholm, Sweden. So we had Norda, right now we have Perfect. Sweden. This is more of a suggestion for improvements than a question. I want to use Google Analytics on my iOS device, like the iPhone, the iPad. Right now it works okay and to see some of the data, but most of the graphs are made in Flash. So we love an alternative to Flash. So this is talking about not tracking, this is talking about reporting. Reporting Google Analytics front end. Google Analytics front so, end. So, so Jens, you are so, we love you so much. You. That we spent the last five months just working on an enormous overhaul to Google Analytics <laughs> that was released 24 hours ago on, on March 1st. Yeah. And no more flash. Boom. Done. 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 Your wish is our command. That was it. <laughs> All your other so, guys. As of March 1st, 2012, you are able to see everything in Flash and Android devices. Be, uh, sorry, Android and iOS devices. Do you view the Google Analytics front end because there's no more flash? Um, um, and a quick question for you, Avinash. Yes. This is part one of three. Hi, Avinash. You mentioned in episode number 23, you have your blog set up with exit links to Amazon.com. It's totally trackable. I work for a hotel internet marketing company that has over 300 independent websites for hotels. We'd love to track how many people are clicking the specific exit links on our sites to go to the hotel brand.com reservations websites. Those are our most important conversions. How do we encode our links to fire off an event? And how can we set up a goal to track these outgoing links and events? So it's very simple. So you could use either virtual page views or you could just use events um, to capture the clicks that are happening that are leaving from your website. We'll link to an article that shows you how to do it. If you have a particularly complex implementation, get a Google Analytics certified professional. They'll help you. Yep, perfect. So with that, I want to thank people who sent us some feature requests. We got Amanda with a nice feature request from her. Adrian, Adrian's got one. Thank you, Adrian. And we've got uh, bugs or feature requests from Kyle in Salt Lake City, uh, A. Kravitz in New York, uh, Philippi in Netherlands, and Wax in Ma Max. Max Montreal. in Montreal, um, Frank in Munich, and Andreas in Stockholm. So thank you very much, yep. guys. We're going to make sure that these go to the Google Analytics team to investigate the bugs and look into the feasibility of creating these features. Thank you very much. Make sure that you go to our a website where you can submit questions for the next episode or rate questions submitted by other people. Um, with that, happy analysis.